Okay, set it up there. Hello, and welcome to Dragon Dying. We're going to start with a little something here, talking about soda ash and checking how much soda ash I have today. We will come back to this later, but it may be important to show you. So today we shall begin by talking about where to get soda ash and what is it and why do we use it? Soda ash is a simple basic fixative. There's a lot of traffic tonight. Okay, so soda ash is a simple fixative. Hopefully I can talk over that car. Because even that one's a little noisy. Doesn't normally do that. I'm Tanya with Dragon Dyes of Love. This is HTHPH increaser. Active ingredient, sodium carbonate. This is the same thing. I just bought it at a different store. Active ingredient, sodium carbonate. This is what you're looking for. Soda ash raises the pH of your water solution and makes it possible for dyes to bond to these great shirts that I just got today. These are prepared for dyeing cotton. Which means there's no finishes for me to wash off or other crap. And normally, I don't throw them on the wet deck, but today, I don't have a choice. So, oh, this was for mixing that soda ash. I can take it off for a moment and stop looking like a fool. I also have a really good dye respirator mask. I did find it on that big box store in the cloud that I don't love to shop at, but sometimes you have to. This one's been reused a lot of times. It's time to move on to that one for the dye stuff. So this is the soda ash I got at the hardware store. And at the hardware store, just a different one. You can also get these at the pool supply store. And I'm told, I have not fully confirmed, but the big box stores tend to sell these as so washing soda in the laundry soap line aisle. Laundry, uh, washing soda in the wash, uh, laundry soap aisle. And the other desperate alternative, if you have an eye dye order you need to do soon, you can use your baking soda and heat it in the oven for about an hour. It does allow the dye to fix to these. We'll talk about getting Yuri in the water later, and we'll see what happens with this because that's that's going to be an important point in mixing this stuff up. So I'm going to tell you my ratios in just a second. I wish there was a little less traffic, but sunsets earlier, so we're going to get busier, and then we'll mix these up. To mix soda ash correctly, one cup of soda ash to one gallon of warm water. Warm to the warm, you know, a little warmer than your skin is good. Not more than 105 to 120 degrees for most dye stuff. I do not use distilled water. I just reuse these containers because I'm cheap. I drink this. Um, but this is my tap water. I will also use tea jugs or whatever I have on hand. But I know I've got at least a cup in here, probably two. I brought out three because I've got a five gallon bucket finally. When I first started, I started with a dollar store mop bucket and I still have that down in my basement. This will probably stay up here. And I'm going to show you the soda ash soaking process from start to ready to dye. So we'll get that ready. I'm going to pour the water in first just because it's fun and easy. And then it's going to be a little noisy and block out the car. And yes, I'm taping this in the evening, so it is 6.30 at night and everyone's driving home. I'm going to say this, if you know you have a full container, you can mix all three gallons at once. Um, I'm going to do it a little differently tonight. I'm going to mix it a little differently tonight. So, it's going to get muffled. I'm going to say something real quick about mixing soda ash, and one reason I just set this in here, I want you to see it when I'm done. I'm going to pour this water out and have a clump of soda ash waiting, probably. Unless I had more movement than I thought. When you mix the soda ash, in fact, I will just bring the camera right up here for it. And I'm pretty sure I've got two cups. I do more. I'm going to start with two cups, two gallons of water. And we'll check. So, let's do this a little gently so I don't kill this jug. Okay. Pop that in recycling. And we are going to bring you up close and personal. So I'm not sure how to set this up so I can do this easily. 
other than maybe this and we'll raise it. But really all I have is water in there. I'm going to put the mask on. I won't be talking. As soon as you get the soda ash going into the water, you start stirring and you don't stop until it's dissolved. It will be harder to hear me with this mask on. I may do a voiceover. Just to remind you to stir. All right, guys, how do I look? Ready to go? Still my, yeah, still muffled. All right, so I'm going to pour over this. Some of these do have lines, approximately six, three, six, and nine ounces. I want eight ounces plus a tablespoon. And this is my soda ash mixing cup. We'll hit that in a moment. So, gently, slightly heaping, not perfect. Get ready. In goes the spoon. Then there's the soda ash. Keep stirring, especially if there are clumps. Now, this doesn't have to be mad stirring. It doesn't have to be crazy stirring. You do want to keep this on and stay safe. And I've got another cup of soda ash here good to go. Keep stirring. The spoon's still in here. All right. And there's one more way you can do this. So let's get this part over with. I will need to buy more of this because that is an empty container. I didn't quite intend for that much. That would be fun. But we're going to dump this in there. I do have a clump, so I'm going to keep it stirring. And then what am I going to do? Pack this up. Keep stirring, keep stirring. You're all stirred. You want to dilute that a little, and I'll probably pour more over it just so I, I don't know what sodium carbonate does to decks, but it's generally caustic and raises pH, and the wood likes to keep things natural. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to pick you up, forgive the camera movement, because I'm not common, I don't have a good pause function. Move you gently over here, so you can see, I've just got it stirred in, it's all ready to go. Keep it stirring, as long as you, this is fine, I no longer have to stir. It will dry white on this stuff. These are dedicated tools. Oh crap, there goes that. Which means once I mix these, they do not get used for anything else. Another tip, because now what I'm going to do, and you don't need three gallons for two shirts. This is what I have today, what I'm dying. I will probably be dying a little more next week. And soda ash lasts a long time. You can leave it in this bucket with a lid on it for months. So here we go. And I'm just putting the shirt in there. And the next one. And I will be back out in 15 to 30 minutes after I talk about this soda ash spritzer for a minute. Um, to pull, put on gloves and pull these out. I will put on gloves at that time because there are dyes on my hand. And I don't want them to get in there. You're never sure your hands are clear either. So here are the gloves. This, I poured some soda ash in here, I don't know how many months ago. Because these will spin dry and we'll let them hang out till probably tomorrow morning, maybe the weekend, who knows. Till I'm ready to dye them. Once I'm ready to dye them, I will fold them, tie them up, and get them ready to dye. And I'm going to check on this. I do not have a full disc. There we are. As you can see that sediment in the bottom. We're going to come back to that in about 15 minutes to a half hour. Just so you can see, this didn't dissolve. It will not dissolve at this time. It is, it is essentially a brick. And done. And we'll be back out in 15 minutes, barring rain, and we can leave this in here a day, two days. Some people have left it a week or a month, and it's been okay. Um, I can't... I prefer not to leave it in a full week or a full month, but you won't, you won't overly kill your shirt because of it. So some of this stuff will be sitting here waiting for the next shot. Thank you.